Welcome to the Getting Started Quickly Overview for Flight Schedule Pro. If you have an account already set up and, and you're looking to get online scheduling set up as quick as possible, then this video tutorial is for you. We have a lot of companies that get in touch with us and they say, you know, we're not ready to uh, learn everything about the system or get everything implemented, but we would like to get our schedule set up and online with Flight Schedule Pro as soon as possible. How do we do that? If that's you, uh, this is going to be really helpful. I'm just going to overview the, the main items with getting started quickly. So assuming that you have your own account, I'm going to go ahead and log in as an administrator and imagine with me that this is a blank account. We obviously have reservations down here and there's aircraft already added, but uh, your account won't have that to start out with. So initially we want to go to company and resources and we're going to add aircraft to the system. Uh, you'll see an add new resource button on the left and what that'll do is pop open a window for us and we want to add a new aircraft and then we can put in a, a tail number and select the make and model and notice you can put a uh, additional makes and models if if the make and model you're not looking for, that you're looking for is not in that list then you can you can add new ones and that'll that'll pop open a um, a selector that you can you can modify those existing makes and models. So those aren't built into stone. And notice the, there's a couple pop-up windows. So you want to make sure your browser is enabled to receive pop-ups from Flight Schedule Pro. Uh, otherwise, it, it's going to be hard to perform some of the key functions. I'm going to close this window. This is a Cessna and a 172. And the only other thing we need to set up to create an aircraft is, is say how many engines and, and the type. And uh, we'll hit Save Changes. That'll create our first aircraft. And we could create another aircraft, or we could return to the aircraft list here, which I'm going to do. And we can see that we created our aircraft. Um, so that's, that would be the, the main step, number one. Now, you probably have some key staff that you want to invite, you know, possibly the, the owner of the company, or maybe you are the owner of the company, you want to invite some of the, the uh, flight instructors or schedulers or uh, anybody else that, that is a key member of the organization. If we go to Company and Users, this will show us our current users, and we can add a new user. And this is a good way just for internal people. We, we would add, we'd need to choose a unique username and password for that person, first name, last name. If we have an email address, this is really helpful because it'll send an invitation to that person. And, you know, also I should note that you don't need to be too selective with this email or this username and password if you do have an email address because the system is going to email that person and say, here's your username, here's your password. You can update that information when you log in. So uh, don't be too concerned about it. If it was me, I would probably use uh, numbers in there um, and, and not try to not try to pick because it is a shared pool of usernames. So pilot is probably going to be taken uh, in a lot of cases. So that's a quick way. All we need to do is you know, select some additional information at the end. What role do we want to assign them to? And then hit Add User. And that's going to send the invitation and or create the account. Um, so they can either be notified via email or we'll just tell them their username and password. Now the next thing that we can do is, is uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the schedule. Now let's assume that we've already created all of our aircraft on here. We have a couple of of Cessnas here that we just added recently, and those are those are going to look like you know freshly added aircraft. So the schedule's wide open for them. Um, you need to be thinking about how how soon you want to cut over. What what's the first day that you're going to be live on Flight Schedule Pro? And you know let's say it's in a in a couple days. The best way to, to make a cutover, and I, I don't recommend that you run two schedules side by side. I know that's a there's a tendency to do that because of just redundancy, and you want to make sure that the new schedule works, but it can really cause some confusion. 
But you know that, that's up to you. If you if you choose a date in the future, you say this is the date we want to start on Flight Schedule Pro, and let's say uh, in the system here we're on the 18th. Let's say that's the next Wednesday. Okay. Now what we can do, we have an existing schedule somewhere, unless it's a brand new company. So that schedule could be in paper, it could be in another web-based system, could be on a on a, a desktop system. We have an existing schedule. Now we don't have all of our users added to Flight Schedule Pro. They haven't registered, we haven't added them manually, but the neat thing is is we can go ahead and post reservations for those individuals. So I'm going to be looking at my schedule and maybe have somebody on your staff that can go through and, and copy the, the schedule over. But if I click here on 8 a.m., what that will do is pop open our reservation page. Now notice it's going to select me as the customer. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to say none. Okay. And I'm looking at my other schedule and I can see that uh, there's a reservation for Sally Wheatley. And it's in our 172 and it's at 8 a.m. on this the, the Wednesday that we were on. And let's say there's no instructor. It's just that that is the reservation. We don't need to send an email because there's not a user selected. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Your reservation was made successfully. So I'm going to close the window. It refreshed the page behind. And what we've done is populate the schedule on Flight Schedule Pro. So, you know, Sally doesn't have a user account yet, but we posted a reservation in her name when Sally does get her own account and the rest of our customers and members get an account then these reservations can be tied specifically to their account so that they can receive notifications and they can see these reservations on their home page however for the time being we're, we're making a transition that's a quick way to do it so we could go through here and create reservations for uh, aircraft uh, pilots flight instructors and um, use that or for field to post the post the reservation in that in that person's name so that it's visible on the schedule. Okay, now let's assume that we've copied over all our our existing schedule from our the day that we want to go live on Flight Schedule Pro and after. Then all we need to do is communicate to everybody that that Flight Schedule Pro is the live schedule on that day. So any any new appointments that are set up on or after that day, they needed to be they need to be added to Flight Schedule Pro. So uh, now we're ready. We've got we've got a, a live schedule. We have our reservations copied over there. They're in the right people's names. And the best thing that we can do at this point in time is to uh, invite people to log in. We added a few internal staff users earlier. I want to show you the the link that you can add to your website. So let's go to the system setup section. And on the left we'll see general and we can use link to FSP. Now this these links that we can use, they can be sent out in an email they can be posted on on your website as well um, and there's a couple different ones we have a login page and a sign up page and in most cases the login page is is what's used on a website so here's the here's the URL that that can be used and if you want more information on how to link your website uh, you can go right up here in the how do I use my gateway pages there's a link to FSP article and you can also search for that in the support center and it, and it shows there's a piece of code that you can drop on a web page and it'll pull in a logo or you can you can do it in a in some other way just using this URL the benefit is when people click on this we're going to recognize that they're wanting to register for your company so they don't have to select from a, a large group of companies you can have this page customized with your own logo at the top and 
by enabling people to register on their own, they choose their own username and password. They enter their own contact information. So what we've seen is the adoption rate and the the time it takes. The adoption rate is a lot higher and how long the transition period, the length of that is shortened a lot by enabling people to register on their own. Now when they register, they're going to get an email, thank you for registering, then as an administrator, somebody that's able to approve new users to Flight Schedule Pro, um, you're going to get an email that says you have a new user waiting to be approved. And if I go to the company and users page, you'll see we have approve users as one of our buttons here. We don't have any users waiting to be approved. But if we did, we can click that link. We can review their name, their address, their contact information. We can assign them to a role and approve them. And that person's going to be sent an email that says, okay, you can now log in and, and for, to the online schedule. And we've really closed the loop. We didn't have to go through and add 100 users manually. Um, they signed up on their own when they were ready. And what you'll see is people will be very active. Uh, if that's given, if they're given that opportunity to set up their own account. You'll also see a link on your home page if you have permission to approve users. You'll see in this system messages section that you have new users waiting to be approved. So you're going to get an email, you're going to be able to log in and see the link and and approve any any users that sign up. Let me go back to this link to FSP page here. Something you might also note is that you can you can set a logout web address. So the idea being that if you have your own website, then people go to that to access your schedule. When they come to Flight Schedule Pro, it has your company name, your logo at the top. Um, when they register, it's branded. When they log out, we redirect them back to your website as well. So in a lot of ways, they haven't left your website. Uh, Flight Schedule Pro fly, flies into the background, and and your your company brand and and you your professionalism is is improved by uh, you know working with Flight Schedule Pro. So we've really gone through uh, the key parts of getting started quickly. We've we've set up uh, our aircraft. Uh, we've invited some internal users. We've set a, a cutover date and copied our reservations using that OR4 field. We've put a link on our on our website or emailed that link out so people are registering and, and when they log in they're going to see the current schedule and gradually the the reservations will be in their name and uh, when we create reservations the they'll those users will receive notifications. So that's really a good start for scheduling and then beyond that you can you can gradually implement additional modules and functionality on Flight Schedule Pro to even further improve your operations. So thank you for viewing the Getting Started Quickly video tutorial.